night, boys and girls. I hope you've been enjoying Night of the Ninjas by Mary Pope Osborne. We so far have read chapters, the prologue, and chapters one, two, and three. We're going to start on chapter four today called Captured, and it's going to start on page 20. So I'm going to use the bottom page numbers down here. I know 13 is lower than 20. Oh, not quite there yet. 17. Uh-oh. I went to 23. 23 is more than 20, so I need to go back. There it is. All right. Chapter 4, Captured. <coughs> the ninjas pulled iron bands off their hands. The bands had spikes like claws on them. That's how they climbed the tree, Annie whispered to Jack. The ninjas stared at Jack and Annie with dark, piercing eyes. The rest of their faces were covered by their scarves. Jack felt frozen under their stares. Annie wasn't frozen, though. She stepped right up to them. Hi, she said. The ninjas didn't say hi back. They didn't move at all. They were as still as Jack. Um, we're trying to help our friend Morgan, said Annie. She held up Morgan's note. The tall ninja took the note from her. He looked at it. Then he gave it to the short ninja. The two ninjas stared at each other. Then they looked back at Jack and Annie. Finally, the short ninja nodded once. He put the note into the pocket of his shirt. You can help us? Annie asked. Neither ninja spoke. Jack wished he could see their faces. He couldn't tell what they were thinking. The short ninja tossed the rope ladder back out of the treehouse. The tall one pointed down the ladder. Then he pointed at Jack and Annie. Uh-oh, thought Jack. Were they being captured? Us? Go with you? said Annie. The ninja nodded. Oh boy, said Annie. Oh boy, is she nuts? wondered Jack. Oh, I bet you I read that wrong. It's not oh boy, it's more of a oh boy, like she's excited. So Jack's thinking she's a little crazy. Let me try that again. Oh boy, said Annie. Oh boy, is she nuts? wondered Jack. The short ninja darted down the ladder. He went hand over hand. His feet didn't touch the rungs of the ladder. The tall one did the same. Jack gasped. The ninjas moved very fast. They were like spiders dropping from webs. Wow, said Annie. Now's our chance to leave, said Jack. Quick, he looked around the treehouse again. Where was that Pennsylvania book? Let's go with them, Jack, said Annie. No, this isn't a game, Jack said. But I think they know something about Morgan, said Annie. She started down the ladder. Come back, said Jack, but it was too late. Jack sighed. Why does this always happen? He asked himself. Remember last time we read, when we see an uh, italicized word, that means it's slightly slanted. That means that you want to say that word um, a little different. So let's look at that again. It says, Jack sighed. Why does this always happen? He asked himself. Come on, Jack, came Annie's voice from below. Jack put his notebook and the ninja book into his pack. He pushed his glasses into place, and he started down the ladder. Jack joined Andy and the ninjas on the ground. The sun had fallen behind the hills. The sky was streaked with red and gold. The mouse peeked out from Annie's sweatshirt pocket. Don't be scared, Peanut, Annie whispered. We'll take care of you. Great, thought Jack. But who is going to take care of us? The short ninja held Jack's arm in one hand and Annie's arm in the other. I wonder if that's what's happening right here on the cover. That's what makes me think of that moment. As they're just coming down from the ladder, the mouse is peeking out. Hmm. Where are we going? Jack asked. The ninja stopped near the rushing water of the wide stream. The water roared as it raced downhill. 
The short ninja looked at Jack and Annie. He let go of their arms. Then he pushed them toward the street. You want us to cross it? shouted Annie. Annie. The ninja nodded. Then he and the short ninja stepped into the wild street. They started wading across. Let's run back to the treehouse, said Jack. No, we have to follow them, said Annie, for Morgan's sake. Jack took a deep breath. She was right. Annie grabbed Jack's hand. Together, they stepped into the water. Yikes! They both screamed and jumped out. It was the coldest water Jack had ever felt. It was colder than ice. It was so cold, it felt like fire. I can't go back in, said Annie, shivering. Me neither, said Jack. I'll have a, a heart attack. The ninjas looked at Jack and Annie. Then they turned around and came back. The tall ninja grabbed Jack. Help, Jack cried. But the ninja lifted Jack high into the air and put him on his shoulder. The short ninja, ninja put Annie on his shoulder. There they are, Annie. Jack, excuse me, and Annie. Then the two ninjas stepped into the stream again. The icy water swirled around them. It went up to the short ninja's waist, but the ninjas moved through the stream as calmly as two ship sailing ships. Wow, oh, look, there's Mickey Mouse. Very exciting. <gasps> chapter five. I think we have time for another chapter. It's called Flames in the Mist. The water grew shallow again. Then they were on dry land. The ninjas lowered Jack and Annie to the ground. Thanks, said Annie. Thanks, said Jack. Squeak, said the mouse. <laughs> the ninjas said nothing, but they looked around. Jack looked around, too. A full moon was rising in the sky. Dark rocks dotted the side of the mountain. Then the ninjas started moving. They went silently up the slope between the rocks. Jack and Annie followed them. Jack wasn't afraid of the ninjas now. In fact, he was starting to like them. Maybe they really could help find Morgan. The ninjas moved silently, but Jack and Annie made plenty of noise. They panted as they climbed the rocky hillside. <sighs> That's what panting sounds like. Their wet sneakers made squishy sounds. Suddenly, the ninjas froze. Jack could see their eyes darting around. Voices were coming from the valley below. Jack saw torches flaming in the mist. The ninjas started moving faster. Jack and Annie hurried after them. Who's carrying the torches? Annie asked. Who do you guys think are car is carrying the torches? Hmm. I'm not sure if I've got any clues yet. I know we see flames in the mist, but who's in that mist? Let's find out. Jack was too out of breath to speak. He also didn't have an answer. They came to a pine forest. Night birds called out. Wind rattled the branches. The ninjas moved like ghosts through the forest. They appeared and disappeared through moonlight and shadows. <clears throat> Jack and Annie struggled to keep up. Finally, the ninjas came to a stop. One ninja held out his hand as if to say, wait. Then both ninjas stepped away into the shadows of the trees and were gone. Where did they go? said Annie. I don't know, said Jack. Maybe the book can tell us. He pulled the ninja book out of his pack. He turned the pages until he came to a picture of a cave. By the light of the full moon, he read, Sometimes ninjas held meetings in hidden mountain caves to plan secret missions. Oh, man, said Jack. I bet they went inside a hidden cave. He pulled out his notebook and pencil. He wrote, Meetings in Hidden Caves. 
Jack turned the page. He stared at a picture of a ninja sitting on a mat. He read, Ninjas took orders from a ninja master. The master was a mysterious, wise person who knew many secrets of nature. Hmm. Wow, whispered Jack. Just then, the two ninjas returned. Jack quickly put his books away. The short ninja motioned for Jack and Annie to follow. In the shadows was the entrance of a dark cave. What's in there? Annie whispered. The ninja master, Jack whispered back. Dum, dum, dum. So here we go. Chapter six is going to be called Shadow Warrior. I wonder what that's going to be about. We'll have to find out next time in Night of the Ninjas. Bye, guys.